Hey everyone, it's me Vivian and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things data, lifestyle and career. So throughout my experience working in the analytics industry over the past several years, I've interviewed for countless roles, but I've also hosted many other interviews for candidates across all different seniority positions. Um, given that internship season is soon approaching for our penultimate uni students here in Australia, I thought, you know what, what better timing than now to share some of my tips and tricks on how you can ace your upcoming technical interviews. So whether or not you're applying for an internship or for a full-time analytics position, these tips should be quite general and applicable to any kind of interview. So hopefully you guys can learn something from my video. So for some background, I used to be super nervous before every single interview. I would spend hours, and I'm not joking when I made hours, the previous night on either Whirlpool messaging strangers, um, asking them what kind of questions that they would expect in an interview, or other times I would be on Glassdoor just I guess browsing on other people's interview experiences. Um, however, having done this for so many roles across the last five years, I've narrowed down my key findings and summarize them into a couple of points which I'm going to share later on. Before we get into it though, I want to flag that no two interview processes are the same. Um, they vary so much between industry, between experience levels required, and even within the same company, different teams have completely different ways of handling their interviews. So whatever questions I get will not be the same questions that you will be getting. However, having said that, I do believe the structure of the analytical interviews across data science positions are relatively similar in that the first round would be a screening interview, the second would be a behavioral, the third generally consists of a technical coding test and a take-home case study, and then you may or may not have a final cultural fit test. Um, let's get straight into it. So the first step is the screening process. And this happens after you submit your resume or your cover letter or your LinkedIn profile for review. Um, this is, to me, the stage that is most similar across all different industries, whether it's consulting or professional services. Um, it's more of an elevator pitch from both sides, just to you know make sure that the job is actually what you want and what you are expecting from the job description. It's traditionally done with either the hiring manager themselves or with somebody from HR. So this is generally a phone interview where the interviewer would ask you to walk through your resume and describe your relevant qualifications and work experience. Um, there may also be some high level technical stuff or some statistical concepts. So as an example, I got asked, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? In this stage, you will also be provided a bit more context on the role and what your day to day would look like if you were successful thing to keep in mind is they're going to ask you for your current salary and your salary expectations so make sure you're prepared for that. Um, this round is more like a first date you just want to see if you know you're compatible so take it pretty chill and you should be fine. Um, the next step of the interview process is where you meet the interviewer for the first time whether that's in person or over zoom. Um, this round is still quite behavioral and you could be meeting with either the hiring manager alone or the hiring manager as well as somebody from HR. Um, so questions to expect in this round in any data science or analytics interviews would be, so your standard one, why do you want to leave your current role and why do you want to join company X? You're definitely going to be getting a walk me through your resume. Another data science related question would be, Talk me through one of your key projects or your model builds, how did you go about it, and what impact did that bring for the business. So remember that you want to try and stand out from this entire pool of applicants who are also going for this role. Um, do your research in what the company does and why you want to join this company in particular. Um, when you're describing your projects, be concise, don't waffle on and on about something. Um, really just keep to the point and keep your thinking structured. Um, always focus on the customer and the business impacts of your work. So as an example, you don't want to be saying my model has 95% accuracy and it was super fancy. You want to say I worked with cross-functional teams across the business to build a predictive model which helped save the business $2 million in loss. So it's all about your final impact and what you've done. So when it's time to ask questions at the end of the interview, you want to be inquisitive and you want to put your best foot forward. 
So never say no, I have no further questions. Um, always ask more, show them you have your growth mindset. Um, a few examples would be, you know, what kind of data projects would I be working on? Who are the key stakeholders I would be working with? Is that going to be product, marketing or risk? Um, what would a day in the life look like if I were successful for the role? Um, this shows them that you are curious and you want to grow more and you want to learn. Honestly, I think by now, um, the hiring manager and the HR, they generally have a pretty good impression of who you are as a person and if you'd be a good cultural fit into the team. So actually, a lot of candidates are cold at this stage. So next, if you were successful, you're going to move on to the technical round. There's many different ways of conducting this interview. However, I found that the most common is a technical coding test followed by a take-home case study. So for any data science or analytics role, um, the coding test is generally done. You're going to have a section which is in SQL as this is a heavy part of the job when it comes to data manipulation and data aggregation. There will also be a chunk in either R or Python or your preferred scripting language of choice. Um, please let me know if you want to see me make a video on mock SQL questions and answers. I'm very happy to do that. So I think some tips to keep in mind for this interview is that remember it's not about you arriving at the correct answer. It's all about your thought process. The test is here to measure your analytical abilities. It's not about whether or not you can memorize a formula for the F statistic. So articulate your thought process, think out loud wherever possible, write clear structured code and add comments wherever possible. Remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the interviewer is always here to help you. They also want you to do well and if you go off track, they will try guide you back on track. So think out loud, um, be structured and you will do well. So the final part of the technical interview is your take home case study where you are going to be given a data set as well as a business problem. Now, this kind of question is supposed to stimulate a real life example of what kind of work you could expect if you were successful for the role. Um, you will then be given 15 minutes to present this back to the interviewer panel. You want to lay out your assumptions, your key metrics, talk through your approach and how you will reach the eventual business outcome. So honestly, in this stage, the interviewer is just looking for your communication skills. Um, you've already proved your coding skills and your technical skills. Right now, it's all about how you can bring data to life. How can you use this data set to answer a business problem? So some tips that I have here is that less is more when it comes to slides. Never overcrowd your slides. Um, if you want to go above and beyond, you can always provide some additional analysis or some recommendations of what you would do had you had more data. Um, one other tip that I can think of that I think is so simple yet so crucial is when you're making slides, Use the company colors. Don't just go with what PowerPoint gives you as a default. Look at your company logo and use those colors in your slides and in your charts. Um, another tip I have is you can use the website beautiful.ai for pretty slide templates. And if you want to look for icons, there are plenty on the noun project. So the final part of the interview is a cultural fit. Um, this is generally with some members of the wider team or even possibly some senior stakeholders. Um, this is where they assess, you know, how likely you are to fit into the team. So I know that some banks have a very rigorous way of approaching these tests. They make you do these multiple choice questions, for example, the Gallup test. Um, I personally don't like these types of interviews at all. I think it's much more, you get much more out of an in-person interview than you do from someone doing multiple choice online. Um, honestly, if you've got into this far, you've probably already passed all your technical concepts. Now the hiring manager is just keen to see what you would be like. You know, would you get along with people in the team? Um, here, they would ask you about, you know, what hobbies do you have? What do you do outside of work? Just really a conversation. Um, another tip is to know your company's values, whether that's, you know, teamwork, integrity, um, communication, whatever those values are. Try know them and try to showcase them. But in the end, really just be polite, be inquisitive, and just be yourself. Um, once the interview is over, I personally will always drop a thank you note. You normally have the interviewer's email address as you would have been sent the initial calendar invitation. I find it leaves a good impression. Just be like, hey, person X, it was lovely meeting you today. 
um, I hope that you know I get to hear back from you soon um, even if it didn't go as well you could always drop a note and ask for additional feedback I find that the interviewer is always very very willing to help you out um, my final tip for you would really just be to relax and be yourself you've come this far I'm sure you're very very prepared um, we are all extremely critical of ourselves and I know how daunting the whole interview process can be but really you've got this Go into the interview room, be polite, be confident, be yourself, and you'll be totally fine. Um, all the best if you actually have an interview coming up. Um, I hope this video helped you out in one way or another, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!